other thing I was fascinated with was the shadows. I read that you met in a dance class. That's true. And here you are making your pillow debut. I think something happened in between. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> at some point, someone said, let's start a dance company. So can you sort of each take a chance, sort of a turn filling us in on how, how body traffic came to be? I'll let you start. OK. Well, <laughs> as Nancy said, it was a ballet class in Los Angeles. And I saw Tina. And New York dancers, or really finely trained dancers, stand out in open classes in Los Angeles. So I literally went up to her, and I hit on her <laughs> in a dance sort of way and said, you're kind of good. Where are you from? <laughs> and she was still living in New York. Mm -hmm. And then about a year later, we bumped into each other again. And I took her to a modern class and just jokingly said, you should move here, and we should start a company. Um, and then she actually did move to be with her mm -hmm. husband. And it was a very sort of nonchalant idea, being that we were both from New York, um, and we had friends in L.A. that were from Shenway and Le Grand that were transplants to L.A. and didn't have a place to work. And we were uh, studying with Glenn Edgerton, who's now the director of Hubbard Street, and he encouraged, uh, encouraged us to start something. And with his blessing, um, we did start rehearsing at the Colburn and founded the company, and I choreographed the first piece to get us started. It was very much like that, and uh, you know, like any married couple, we both have husbands, but then we're married too. Um, you know, we have our own versions of the story, but that really is what happened. And we started the company because we both, you know, we were young and we felt our careers were, we were young. Our careers <laughs> this really is LA. Were, <laughs> we, we don't speak age. Or... Right. Our careers were, you know, we were in the throes of the, the climax of our career. We were, you know, we weren't going to be any better than we were when we started. And we thought, how could we not try to do work of the highest caliber, work that we would be doing in New York or elsewhere in Europe? And so we started the company really out of necessity and out of a desire to keep our careers thriving. And uh, I don't know, just here we are. Excellent. Yeah. So I, I had a chance to observe body traffic in action this week, mm -hmm. um, watching rehearsals and just watching them interact. And um, in, the, in the studio, I, I watched you seamlessly go from dancer to director to both dancers while Barack was uh, leading you. So it was just so fluid how you just switched roles. So can you talk a little bit about, I mean, you danced in every piece. Um, you, you guys are really busy. <laughs> We're busy. That is an understatement. <laughs> yeah. So how, how did you, and I know that in the company you also have very clear delineation of what you each add to it. So how did you figure all that out and get so good at that sort of seamless switching? Can I take a Yes, step? absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, it's true. We are wearing a lot of hats, and it's, it's a difficult struggle at times. Um, and we really try to communicate with each other before the start of the day and, and say, okay, what's our game plan? I'm going to lead rehearsal from this time to this time. We're going to work on this piece. Then you're going to take over, and I'm going to focus on my dancing. We really try to plan ahead. Now, granted, that doesn't always go according to plan. I think the thing that has really worked for us is that over the years, we have learned the kind of dancers that we need that can keep up with <clears throat> the demands of having two artistic directors who have a lot going on and, and are concerned with being dancers as well. How did your paths cross? Well, um, actually, it was uh, um, <laughs> at my gym in the sauna, and this guy started talking to me and asked me what it was that I did, and uh, I said, I'm a choreographer. He said, oh, my wife's a dancer, and that was Lillian's husband, That's Grant. True. Oh. And that was the beginning of, of, of this. Only in L.A. does yeah. this happen. Everything happens in a gym in L.A., yeah. so that's... Uh, that, that's it, but that's, but, that's but how my husband misspoke. He came home and he said, I met the choreographer from Batsheva. <gasps> oh. oh. And I said, you met Ohad in the hot tub? <laughs> <laughs> and, he said, and he said, no, the house choreographer from Batsheva. Yeah, the, so that's, did, yeah. yeah and so that's something must have happened next, though. So what, where, how did you actually end up working with the company? I think it was actually the original project we did was uh, Saban Center, right? Um, that's right. Yeah, we, it, was, it was actually a series of really fortunate uh, incidences where I was approached for to do work and 
had seen uh, their, their company already, and immediately that was, that was where the match was lit. It, was, it started off with really small projects, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we got along very, very well, and uh, with a lot of, also, some, some minor battles and skirmishes Artists. on the way. Um, and, you know, I think that it's, I, I want to say something first about, about this company. My father, when I came back from Israel, I'd been in, in Bacheva for, for two years, and then broke my leg and stopped dancing, and said, you should open up a company in Los Angeles, and I told him I'd rather shoot myself in the foot. Oh. <laughs> because, it, it, you know, a, a company in the United States, in Israel, it's fine. In Europe, it's amazing. In New York, it's eh. I mean, you can get by. In L.A., it's impossible. And what they have managed to do in such a short time is really a testament to their talent and their vision. Um, and just one more word about why this connection works so well. They are the kindest people I know, and they are consummate perfectionists, and they care deeply about their dancers and their artists. And that's really all the other things... That's the most important thing, and uh, we've worked together for a long time. But we, we, we did end up, uh, they ended up filling in for my Israeli company for some tours in Monger, and then we won, we were, uh, we applied for the award show, the uh, Joyce Award Show, and they did a section of my work, Rooster, and that brought about this piece, actually. We won it um, because of their brilliant performancing, uh, and, um, and I think we'll continue to work in the future. Great. So, in thinking about building tonight's um, program, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you anchored the program and built around it? Because I think one of the really wonderful things about tonight is, is this incredible arc of motion that you know, we see this, this storytelling, this very theatrical piece, and then we go to a very abstract piece, and then uh, jazzy plus ballet. So it's just, it's just the whole world of dance in, in an evening. So how, how did you put together the program, and what was the anchor for it? Well, I think one of the strengths of being a rep company in Advantage is that you can show diversity. And we were looking at the repertory, and Barack's work is so gestural and theatrical. Stain Sellis's piece is very ethereal. And then Richard Siegel's piece is very joyous and musical. And so there's sort of the gamut or a, quite a range of things that we could show. But I believe Tina can tell you more specifically about Ella Baff's. She had some oh. input as well. Oh, great. OK. Take yeah, it, Tina. Sure. <clears throat> well, when we started the company, of course, one of our dreams was to be, come to the pillow someday. We really never expected it to be after only five years. So this is a tremendous honor, and we, we feel like it's just exceptional, and we're so happy to have shared it with, with this cast in particular. And uh, when Ella called to, to tell us that you know, she felt like the rep was ready, we, I had been in communication with her, but when she felt like the company was ready, the rep was there, you know, there, was a, there was enough. The thing with a starting rep company is it takes a while until you have enough like great pieces to put together, you know, because not everything you make can really be toured. And so the, you know, the fact that we had three works that were very diverse, each very strong, um, she, you know, she felt like this was an evening that, that people would enjoy and I certainly hope all of you did. Just yeah. another word about the rep, we, Glenn Edgerton, like Lillian mentioned, the director of Hubbard Street is a wonderful mentor of ours. And when we first started, he said, not only to choose rep that we hope the public will enjoy, but to really try to do things that will challenge your dancers, because the company only grows if you push the dancers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, each of those pieces are difficult in very different ways. Barack's work, we are backstage, like, count, count, count. <laughs> <laughs> and then Stain's work requires real emotional maturity. And Richard's work is very musical and uh, requires, you know, quite a bit of technique. So... Well, that's a great segue for um, what I wanted to know from uh, Barack. Your, your choreography in this piece or this work mm. requires the dancer to be an actor um, and a dancer. Yes. And it's, it's very theatrical. So um, could you talk a little bit about building a piece like that on a contemporary dance company? Um, I mean, they, they really handled the... The, the text beautifully yeah. and it's so expressive, but I'd love to hear your process of working with them. Well, I mean, it, it, it's, it, this is the, the, the work that I, that I do, and I think that it, um, it is challenging for, for dancers, but I think that what I find, especially in this company, is this hunger uh, to be challenged um, and uh, to master the impossible. And that all comes back to my mother, which is, you know, <laughs> that's where I come from, and, and she has a mastery that I've tried to try to approach. In, but in building this work, or building any of my works, they're, they're narrative pieces, and I, I want to tell a story, uh, at least as clear a story as I can, in an abstract 
art form. And uh, I try to really um, build movements and a vocabulary that is a sign language, that does express very specific words. Um, and, um, and so I'll build most of the work before I come into the studio because in eight days you, need, you, know, you have to come in prepared, obviously. Um, and then it's really off of the dancers themselves. When I walked into this process and saw you know, these amazing people and these amazing characters, they were the people who brought the art to life. Mm. With you know, the text, yes, I wrote, but I didn't know if it could be, if it could be handled by these dancers, and immediately it was. And um, so that's kind of in a nutshell the process. But it, it, again, it's, it's this company, and this is a very special place to work. Well, Tina and Lillian, you were both dancers in the piece, so, and, and you, you had to do all that. <laughs> so what, what was it like from your, your dancer body traffic life, when you had that hat on, um, to, to do this piece? Where, where did it make you grow and stretch? This movement vocabulary does not come easily to me. <laughs> so when we first learned it, I literally was in my driveway at one Doing o'clock the in the morning, <laughs> trying to get the muscle memory. Yeah, so I definitely have grown. Great, how about Absolutely. you, Tina? Oh, for me, there's no greater challenge than trying to nail Barack Marshall's choreography. It becomes addictive. It is like, it's addictive. <laughs> I, I can't help but, we were joking this morning, like we say, how many times did you mess up? And you know, it's like such a accomplishment if you only messed up one time the whole piece because it's so hard, it's so fast. And it's, for me, it's like, you know, playing some really difficult board game or something like that. Wow. Y'all look perfect and yeah. very accomplished, and if there was a mistake, no one noticed. Barack, could you talk a little bit about your mom's role in this piece and the text well, and she, how it yeah. came to mm -hmm. be? That's a very interesting story. Well, she's, I mean, this is, uh, um, I did a number on her. <laughs> this is, uh, her, most of her text is actually, we, we've written a lot of text together. Um, uh, this is a, a text that she wrote 40 years ago, and it's a part of a larger 20-minute piece. So I, I edited it down, and then she said, you will stand on stage with me because you've done something wrong. <laughs> um, but, 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 the, but she's played, she's, and she said it a little harsher than that. But um, she, <laughs> she, she, this, I mean, I, I, I've used her before in my works, and I think it, she really plays the role of the, the Greek chorus for me, the, the, the storyteller who, who pushes the action forward. The woman who comments, or the people who comment on uh, the tragedy that is about to befall at the end here, and um, I, you know, the, the piece came about independent of her story. Um, it was really, I really wanted to do a sort of blood wedding kind of uh, work, which is what happens at the end, the tragedy. And 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 I really wanted to show that softer side, the the the, the pain and the beauty of marriage, of life, of. Of, of women, of love, um, and I think that that text just really fell so beautifully into place. Um, all the, 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 the beauty and the anger. Um, and um, so she's, she's the narrator here, and I, and I got to stand on stage with her. You did. Yeah. Yeah, it was very, yeah. very touching, yeah. mm -hmm. very beautiful. And she forgives him. Now, the bride is hidden in a small dark room, and the keys is in the pocket of the groom fathers. But the couple has yet to meet face to face. If they are lucky, good. If not, la 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 Kinder, Jon, Tiff, Pieren, Fell, Mir, Spieren, Sieg, Hinter, Edler, Jirebim. 